Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays of Binding of Isaac Antwerth. Plus, some runs you just ball out of control from the get-go, and uh, this was one such run. Last last run we had. This run looks great as well, although I will admit, I looked at our items first and was like, dope. Incubus, Crystal Ball, decent HP. Then you look at our stats, 3 damage and 15 rate of fire is pretty terrible. JBDM, S4, EM. But... I think it's too simplistic to just be like, well, you have an Incubus, so your damage and your rate of fire are basically doubled. Because it's it's harder to hit with Incubus than it is to hit with your own tiers. And it's even harder to hit with both of them. So, I wouldn't say... I mean, the speed up is actually quite nice. I wouldn't say that it compensates for it, but it does compensate for it to a degree. One thing's for sure, it gives us lots of future potential, because as far as I'm concerned, every tier's upgrade, every damage upgrade, and every tier effect is worth slightly more, maybe even a lot more, as a result of having Incubus. It's one of my favorite items in the game, without a doubt. However, man, we did not need to come to this room. Um, however, we are just a little bit, I wouldn't say underpowered, but not as overpowered as you would think given what we're starting with here. For starting with one of the better spacebar items in the game and one of the better passive items in the game, we're not quite looking at this run like it's a foregone conclusion that we're gonna win. To be fair, we started uh, our last run without that knowledge as well, and it you know, started to ball out of control within like seconds. <laughs> You know what? We got Monstro's Lung and I think our first item room, and then after that we got Mom's Knife and our first deal with the devil, and it was just like, it was over, but, um, you know, it can still go both ways is all I'm trying to say, and you gotta admit, dude, man, that is one angry fly. He's flying around here going like, hey, you jerk hole, why don't you use your signal lights? Stop ordering so many things in the deli line, you know? Yes, that's right, angry fly is me. All I ask, the deli line is one thing. That's that's quality of life. If you're watching this, you don't use your turn signals. Use your turn signals. It doesn't mean that I am a bigger man than you, that you took advice from another man. Just and it, You might not even be a man in the first place. There's plenty of women who don't use their turn signals either. Just use your... There's no reason not to use your turn signals. I... I don't think Vancouver is one of the worst driving cities in the world, but it's definitely the worst I've ever lived in. Traffic gets pretty bad, although not nearly as bad as Seattle, and people are jerks on the road. I still signal, even though I talk to people here and they go, I don't signal, because if I signal, someone's going to take the spot that I was going to take when I was changing lanes. Well, then the onus is on them. You have made them into the jerk in this situation, and hopefully you can take at least a great personal satisfaction in that. Plus, a much lower chance that you'll actually die behind the wheel of your automobile from getting, you know, T-boned by somebody who doesn't know you're coming. Anyway, I digress. Spider Babby, that's no good. Well, it's not very good, at least. And, uh... We're not really... Well, we haven't really gotten stacked yet, but this is what this floor is for. I mean, we're killing it on spirit hearts right now why why open a video by talking about driving dude <laughs> oh you didn't realize the whole point of my uh, Isaac videos at this point is merely to slowly but surely seed the weeding out of uh, things that I find annoying today it's not using your signal lights I'm trying to think of what it's gonna be tomorrow um, listening to music on public transportation without using headphones I mean what's wrong with you we live in a civilized society, you just use headphones. Never in history has anyone ever thought, oh, this song is so good, I bet everybody on the bus wants to hear it, and Ben Wright. Everybody just thinks you're a jerk. I'm trying to listen to Paul Simon's magnum opus 1986 classic Graceland. You're over here, you know, bumping, I don't know, some trash music. I don't need to hear the next Kenny Chesney song. I have nothing against Kenny Chesney, it's just an assault on the ears when I'm trying to listen to, you know, the boy in the bubble. I don't even know. I'm almost out of, like, mild, uh... I'm out of mild inconveniences in my life at this point. I'm trying to think, um... People who order at a fast food restaurant and then don't move to the side after they order. They just stand at the machine waiting for the server to tell them to move because they don't understand how things work. Okay, I mean, we're getting a little petty. Ansys. 
We do know where our second secret room is. Since when does... Wait, that's our regular secret room. Weird. No, it's not. That's our second secret room. Since when does Crystal Ball or Ansus tell you where the second secret room is? I thought neither of those gave you second secret room. I thought they only gave you the first secret room. Might be mistaken. Tears up is huge here. And we're actually, like, better than average tears already. Um, better than average starting tears already. Um, and we'll just go down to the next floor here. So, it's looking good. And, uh, multi-dimensional baby again. It stacks with, uh, Incubus in the sense that, you know, we're firing more tiers. I'm assuming when Incubus tiers go through multi-dimensional baby, they become, you know, augmented. Deus Ex style. Whether they do or not, I think it's a, it's a positive get. Plus, it gives us deal with the devil precedent. I'm still, I, the jury, I mean, the jury's not out on this I think the most recent booster pack was probably the best booster pack. Added a lot of uh, interesting items, like the coupon, which I still have not used properly. Telepathy, which is amazing. Um, and, uh, and et, et cetera, et cetera. However, okay, so that doesn't give you the map. It must have been Ansus that gave us the map. Uh, but the big thing for, like, a super Isaac nerd level was the fact that they changed the parameters for deals with the angel so that you can get uh, different angel rooms and also there's a, there's more variants that have a tendency to be higher value as well. I didn't even see that dude there. The invisibility worked. Um, however... Oh, what have I done? I don't know if, uh, if we've really experienced the, the value of that yet. Golden bombs means we should go to town here. Um, it's not that we have not had good deals with the Angels. It's just that we've not seen them enough to really draw conclusions about whether it's been a meaningful change. You know, something that uh, more or less subtly impacts something that only shows up like once every 10 runs or something like that to begin with. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to draw conclusions this early about how it's actually changed. You know, it's only been like two weeks since the booster pack came out. It'll take a little longer to really understand the, um, I just, <laughs> I just turned a Perthrow rune into a penny. It's a good, if you're wondering how I'm feeling right now, I just turned a Perthrow rune into a penny. But I got a smile on my face because I'm feeling good. It was a very silly move though. Um, it did, you know, nonetheless, either way. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we're not gonna see deals with the angel on this run unless we get duality. We have given it our all. If there's, I, I wish there was a way to guarantee deals with the angel that was more common. Here's my, my problem with deals with the angel. If we're gonna talk Isaac and put everybody to sleep for a minute, deals with the angel are. It, it's like the crawl space conundrum. You know, they're not high value enough to justify their rarity right now. You know, crawl space. The first. 20 times you get a crawl space, you go, oh my god, it's a free bit of value. And then you realize pretty soon, you know, what's the, the highest chance payout? Probably a trinket you don't care about or like three cents or a chest that has a troll bomb in it, right? You just eventually, you're like, if it's not a black market, then a crawl space tends to not be worth much. Although you still always check. Um, deals with the angel are still kind of like that. But more because they're just rare and even if you do everything right to try to get them to exist they don't always come to fruition and that would be fine if you know they so often paid out with such amazing stuff that it made sense to dilute the certainty of them showing up but i almost wish like if you skipped one deal with the devil you were guaranteed deals with the angel because it is or at least historically has been suboptimal to skip deals with the devil I don't think you'd get... Let me put it this way. If I was guaranteed deals with the angel by skipping a deal with the devil, most of the time, I would still... If I had the HP, I would still take a bad deal with the devil to get precedent because the pool is more consistently good. However, I might be, I'm basing that off anecdotal evidence of my own personal, you know, pet cause here. So... That might not actually hold true um, with with data, but I still think they should be more likely if you if you make the effort to skip a deal with the devil. I think there should be a higher percentage chance of you going for angel rooms, of you getting angel rooms. I should say. Either way, and it it has to be one you deliberately skip. It can't just be one like, 
oh, I took damage, and now I've got deals with the Angel. Because I think that does maybe make it a little too easy, but regardless. Um, okay. The run's still completely fine. Still waiting on, you know, the, the run buster to, to tear it wide open, but it's fine. We're getting Spirit Hearts fairly frequently. We're getting cards of some usefulness. I'm hoping we get some HP and we can make this Temperance card work on our uh, arcade and maybe get, you know, start to get a chain, get a little extra money. We can buy stuff from the shop, get two blood bags, something like that. But it's not an immediate concern for us to make that happen. But And there are advantages, e even early. That was pretty bad. But there are advantages, even early, to having uh, only Spirit Hearts. We can get into this boss trap room without having to, you know, pull anything, anything funny here. And that was well worth it, as you can tell. <laughs> you can have no spirit, or sorry, have only spirit hearts, so that you can get into the boss trap room and pay for the privilege to get a red heart that you cannot use. That is the, that's the American dream right there. Cube of meat is just a godsend, man. Just a wonderful item. The other change... And the, well, there were many changes, I guess, but the other very noticeable and uh, welcome change in the most recent booster pack was making it so that the waves here actually uh, give you one charge for every single one that you complete. Very, very nice. You know what? Very, very nice for making it... Uh, a little easier to get value out of your spirit hearts there. Sure, we didn't get maybe as much value out of Temperance as we would have liked, but we got value out of Temperance and Charity, or uh, Chariot, I should say, which was not guaranteed in advance. It's an item. It's Belunker's Hat. We already know where our secret rooms are, but I'm not going to turn on my nose at what is essentially a free item. Uh, Spelunker's Hat is not the best secret room enabler. Because we still have to use bombs. Oh, you know what? It does allow us to see the second secret rooms, at least. Which, I'm telling you, dude. Start giving me some eternal hearts. And, uh, I mean, I'll probably trade them away to the deal with the devil immediately. But still, like, it would be a nice gesture. You got to admit. Just throw a bomb down here. Secret room gives us a bomb. Okay. And then we use a bomb to get into our shop instead of one key overall. Use another bomb here. We'll probably buy the item. It's Poke Go. Actually, completely acceptable. An item I I can't believe we didn't get hit there, but an item I quite enjoy. Uh, and depending on what kind of uh, familiars we get as a result of that, it can be uh, extremely powerful as well. Well, unfortunately, there's essentially no way for us to. Well, come on, what's a, what's a boy to do in that situation? There's no way for us to not give ourselves a good chance at a deal with the devil, so we just have to hope that we don't get a deal with the devil. And I guess I hope that that's Lump of Coal. And it's not. Crystal Ball's better, defensively and from a utility standpoint. You know this run is good, by the way, based on the fact that we still have 2.96 damage, and I'm not complaining that much. I will start to complain pretty quickly, because this, you know, these stats cannot stand forever. 2.96 damage does not leave us with a lot of room for error long term. But short term, we can make it work. Especially with an orbital and with Incubus. Like, we're not totally screwed. But we really, really need to amp up our damage. More so than our rate of fire, more so than our speed, more so than getting a new tier effect. We need damage ups. Mr. Dolly is good, and dude, we lucked out for real on the uh, on the uh, distribution of hearts that we got from it. And amazingly, we're still on pace for uh, boss rush if we should like to go to it. But dude, two point nine six damage this many floors in is going to start to be grading pretty soon. To a clubs. All right. Luckily, like Mr. Dolly essentially nullified all the damage that we took earlier on that floor, so uh, I'm feeling good about that, and we're still hoping against hope that maybe, you know, the guppy dream can get started at some point here. We got deal with the devil precedent. Per throw versus uh, two of clubs. We'll just pop two of clubs, justice card. Okay, I mean, slightly suboptimal two of clubs usage, but I digress. 
Secret room doesn't really border a room we're that interested in. It's just the mob trap room this time. Why? I don't understand. We got a tears upgrade, but our rate of fire was all... Oh, no, no, no. Our rate of fire was nine before. It only became seven when we got hit and a cup of milk spilled. Which gives you a nice little tear delay uh, bonus, but uh, sadly, of course, not meaningful most of the time. Hanged man. Range up. We do need uh, range ups. We probably are good now, but we started with like 19 range. And 19 range is a little on the low side for making sure that you can hit things from across the map, which is pretty important for us right now because of the fact that our... That was pretty bad. Um, the fact that our damage is, is essentially non-existent. Oh, I just punched my microphone. My apologies. Uh, five bombs. Remote detonator per throw. 99 bombs. Okay, this is actually sweet. But... I feel like, you know, we keep asking mom for a PlayStation. And, you know, she works hard. But she's coming home with, like, uh, you know, one of those 99-in-1 consoles from Canadian Tire or something like that. And we're like, mom, you don't understand. I know. It's Why would I pay $60 for one game when I could pay $10 for 99 But this is actually worse than, like, all of them put together. So, or th th like, it's it's a waste of my time. You don't understand. It's like buying a, a hundred big wheels instead of one Honda Civic. It's not going to give you what you need. We're asking for damage. We're not getting damage. That's it. That's why you you got the you got the bombs. You take a chance on that. And we probably don't need uh, the uh, burnt penny anymore. Now we peep these. Magic Mush takes us up to five damage. Five and, five and change, which, to be honest with you, is not really uh, exceptional, but it's still, it, it's a lot better. And now we can start to be happy again, because, like, five damage with Incubus, with uh, Multidimensional Baby, you know, there's, there's good stuff to be said about that. And we're getting Spirit Hearts from Crystal Ball, so, like, life is good again. I'm not worried about boss rush. It's always, most of the time at least. On a daily, I do worry about boss rush. But on, on runs like this, it's about pace. It's kind of a tough call. Because I like uh, I like both of these items. Jumper cable uh, is newer. So I'm going to go for that. But it is not too late for um, there's options to be worth something. Because we have bosses that give us items up until like... I mean, we could just run the math pretty quickly, right? We have uh, this floor... It won't affect the next floor, and it'll affect the womb one, but it won't affect the womb two. So 15 cents to get a choice of items on two boss rooms. I still think that's, if you're not doing anything else with the money, I think it's fairly worth it. But um, jumper cables probably stands to give us more benefit here. Crack jacks is, uh, is fine, and sure, let's take ace of spades. With uh, the crystal ball, I'd expect to have a chance to teleport out of our boss rush. But curse of the blind boss rush is like, one of these days i got to learn my lesson... That it's not worth trying to make Curse of the Blind boss rush work. So many times we try to, you know, finesse that combo into existence. And it's just, it tends to be terrible. So, if we can teleport, I will, uh, I'll consider it. But without being able to teleport uh, guaranteed, we should probably say no to it. But again, there's a good chance we can teleport. And we can. So, everything that I've just said is completely for naught, as usual. Two more spirit hearts. Well worth it. Probably not uh, grossly interested in our shop. With our current finances. I, I don't understand the concept of the bomb judgment. He almost always pays out with bombs. It's the weirdest value proposition. So, I'm gonna, I need to have a decent number of bombs to consider playing it. And then there's a chance that he pays out with as many or perhaps even slightly more bombs than I gave him. I don't... This guy should pay out with something other than bombs. Is there a more... And I'm, I say this as someone who thinks this is one of the best games ever made. Is there any reason to play this guy if you don't have, like... I, don't, I, I just can't tell when you're supposed to play him. Do you play him when you have two bombs and hope to get up to five? Do you play him when you have 99 and then you're hoping to get, you know, like a bomb synergy? We got Mama Mega, so 
You know, who's the loser now, NL? I am going to use Mama Mega on this floor just because I can. So, again, don your Blast Shield for this floor and this floor alone. Look at how many tarot cards we got as a result of this, dude. So I guess, honestly, I got what I asked for. I asked for a reason why you would ever uh, take this item, and I, I straight up got one. And now we can make our shop worthwhile as well with two of diamonds, but uh, I, I did get one. Because Mama Mega is, in many situations, worth, uh, worth trying to finesse the game for. However, I think that's also the first time I've ever had Mama Mega pay out there, so... So we Hermit, and then we grab the Yara Rune. And we'll, we'll have to fight those guys, but I think it's only going to be like a turret. Uh, no, because we didn't finish the room, it might actually be the full room. But, like, if we can't kill a full room on this run, we don't deserve our standing right now. So we're going to be completely okay in all likelihood. It's another Hermit card, which we should take because apparently I didn't take the last one, which is very silly. Just popping the Chariot out of convenience, more or less. D10, uh, it's a literal garbage item, but kind of interesting. Get dusted, get dusted. Dude, multi-stage enemies. You're killing me here. You're, you're diluting the usefulness of this incredible Mama Mega pickup. Probably should not have been hit there. With golden keys, dude, why not? Crack into it. These guys should be dead. Great news. Nightlight is actually good. Converter, I mean... I don't know. Let's use it once. Buy a spirit heart. And then go to town here. Wonder if we can get a luck upgrade. I can't remember. I guess you can actually get better angel chances by donating a lot of money. But that's still like... By the time that becomes useful in your run, or like likely in your run, you're probably past the point of uh, being able to accept Angel Rooms. Because you've already got Devil Precedent, which I believe precludes it. But anyway. Alright, Mom, get roasted. Take the Polaroid. Take bottom right item. Just joking, top left, Magneto. Wow, what an incredible... Uh, turn of events. Magne we turn nothing into Magneto. That's the kind of skill that pays the bills in this game. Is there a battery charge? No, there is not. Anyway. I mean, it's not... I'm not complaining. It's so much worse than the last run, but who cares? You know, we're here, we're playing, we're having a good time. The only thing that bums me out is that 5 damage, even with Incubus, is pretty low. Like, 5 damage and a 7 rate of fire... By the womb, I like to be out of the range of items that we could have, you know, when we... A range of attributes that we could have by the time we start a run, you know? On a really, really good run, you could start with 7 rate of fire and 5 damage. As Eden, at least. I mean, even Judas starts with 10 rate of fire and 4 damage. That's not meaningfully that far away. But... Judas doesn't start with Incubus. And that's what pays the bills on these, uh, on these Eden runs anyway, is these starts that are, uh, a little bit suspect, and yet, you know, you, you try to, and I mean, even this isn't that bad, but you try to grind for the win instead of just taking the easy one. But if we've reached the point in which I'm complaining about a run that has Incubus and Magic Mushroom, we're in kind of a weird spot. But I'm only complaining... Because we only have Incubus and Magic Mushroom. We don't... And, and Pyro, <laughs> admittedly. We don't have too much other great stuff, but... This should be more than enough. It's a weird spot for that dude to spawn, but... Far be it from me to complain. With 88 bombs, we really only have to do what we want to do for the rest of this run. Uh, up to the chest, at least. I'm going to... Um, do every room that I don't hate. Because every enemy that we kill gets us, you know, one step closer to getting Crystal Ball charged up. And, you know, over the course of this whole run, Jumper Cables could be worth, like, a couple of Spirit Hearts. Not to mention the mapping. That's not, uh, particularly great, necessarily. 
it could make the difference. Although I am just saving the charge for, you know, the chance to get mapping on the next floor now. This is where you look at it and you go, eh, maybe there's options wasn't the worst call because we don't really want a second level cube of meat right now. Unfortunately, of course, we have no idea what we would get if we had taken those options anyway, so. No deal either, but anyway, we're down to the next floor. Yara gets saved for the chest. And we got a 70, 67% chance for a deal with the devil. I always think it's 70 because I always assume that we've got some sort of bonus that's going to take us to the next level. But that's not always uh, the case. You know, I thought we had like Pentagram or something. But that might have been the last run as well. It's tough. It's tough because deep in my soul, I love the Emperor card. I also love the Black Rune. And I think the Black Rune gets a little bit too little respect. I think it is almost as good as Yera. I think it has a I think it has a higher or a comparable value, expected value to Yera, but a more narrow range. Like Yera could give you eight awesome passives. If you're only able to take one. Yera could give you eight awesome passives, and that's amazing. Or it could give you eight terrible actives, and that's garbage. Um Angry Fly, can you uh, exactly. Um, the great thing about Black Rune is that it, it's like a safety net. If you get too many terrible actives, it, it turns them into potentially okay passives. So I, I really, really like Black Rune. I think it was a, a very positive addition to the game. Anything that adds in, like, a decision that has to be made, I think is, is... Positive, like a meaningful decision that has to be made. And Black Rune definitely fits the bill. Plus, I just love, like, aggregating passive stats. As much as that might seem ridiculous, like... I don't know how many times I've said it. Like, in, in RPGs, I'm the dude who takes the, you know, 1% extra chance to get a critical hit over the dude who takes, uh, you know, Ice Lance. I'm the dude you're yelling at in Dota because he levels stats. That's not true. I don't level stats, but I don't. I also haven't played Dota in like four years, so I've been playing a little, not much, which is amazing for a MOBA. But I'm playing a little Heroes of the Storm lately, and I gotta admit, I understand to some extent why people that are like really into League or Dota look down on it because it is. Like, you don't buy items. The games are much shorter. There's no last hitting. But, like, that casualization of MOBAs, it's got its hooks in me a little bit. I was like, this is a distilled MOBA. It is, the, it's less about preparation, a little less, at least at my beginner level, about strategy. But it's still got, like, the MOBA trappings that I, that I kind of like. So, I, and it's a way, like, Kate's really into the game right now. I hesitate to use the A word. I wouldn't necessarily say she's addicted, but she's playing a lot of uh, Heroes of the Storm. It's a way for us to spend time together. And if I'm like, if I can out myself as being like the most low testosterone individual in history, I love playing support. Any game, I love playing support. I think I, if I have a skill in video games, which is debatable, it's like team awareness. I, I can watch my team and know at least, like, uh, allow me to explain before this sounds like bravado. Keep a pretty good eye on the team and know when, you know, oh, this person needs HP now. Okay, they need the ult because they're going to rush in there. You know, give them the give them the uber charge. You know, it's from playing a lot of medic in TF2, I, I suppose. But the, the class that all these support classes inherit from to some extent. Um, but uh, mostly it's because I can't shoot. <laughs> I'm just terrible at shooting. Or, but, I don't know. I did like skill shots in Dota. Like, I, again, may surprise you. Played a lot of Invoker in Dota 2. Had a great time as Invoker. I know you're saying, NL, how is it possible that someone with a single digit IQ could play Invoker? Quas Wex build. Easy. Easy money. Oh, 
Okay. We can stop talking Dota now. I think I'm past the point where I'm I'm in for a Dota relapse. But I understand the pull of the MOBA, man. That's the other thing that's great about Heroes of the Storm is that if you play, and I'm again I'm not trying to shill for Blizzard necessarily, like they're doing alright, but um if you want to play like ten games of a MOBA in one day, Heroes of the Storm allows you to do that while also holding down a full time job. So, you know, kudos to them for that. Uh, let's not make the same mistake we made earlier. In some bizarre twist of fate, this run is actually going to be faster than our last one. Like, we we ignored the hush fight, but we had the chance to go through with the hush fight, which we did not have in our last one. I guess we spent a lot of time, um, like, not really min-maxing, but taking advantage of, of, like, arcades and stuff like that that showed up so that we could pop off like crazy, but come on, dude. Methinks the judgment doth protest too much. Oh! Good kick, good kick. See, you give a judgment money, and he usually gives you not money. That's a transaction that I fundamentally understand. You give a bomb beggar bombs, and he gives you bombs. Or, eventually, a bomb-related item. But do you see what I'm getting at here? It's also highlighted the absurdity of gambling to me to some extent. Because you put money into the machine, and then you get money back or you don't. It's not an exchange of goods and services. It's literally I'm giving you money for money. What a bizarre concept. That being said, 65 on the Canucks to win the cup next year. One in a thousand odds. I'm getting that Tesla. Sedine, you can do it. Not the other Sedine, though. No, that's it. low life. Peanut butter. Okay, I'm joking. Dennis Poppin. Okay. Lover's card. Nothing to do with it. Our HP should be a million percent fine. We're just going to go back and get that battery charged so we have immediate mapping for the next floor. Uh, we got lucky that Jumper Cable actually did pay out with a, a charge in time for us to use it. We got the Lover's Card out of it, so it was worth zero, but it was still worth trying. Okay. Continue to get dusted, Yun. Yara Rune finally going to come to fruition for us. I feel this thing's going to give me a Spirit Heart. I was then hoping it would give me a luck upgrade out of those pennies so I could spin it into, well, you know, it'll drop a spirit art for us later as a result of our newfound luck, but no such luck. Pop it. There's our spirit heart. Can't spin it, though. Let's go. Let's... Oh, it yared the spirit heart. That was very lucky because I did not plan for that. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, baby. You gotta try to double these bad boys. <sighs> He's done it. So now we have two Seraphims. Two little Stevens. Two Robo Babies. Two Samson's Chains. These are a rare, and two Peeper's Eyes, but these are a rare collection of familiars that actually warrant doubling. It's not amazing. <laughs> They're not like the greatest doubling I've ever experienced in my life, but it's, it's not bad. Like, Crooked Penny actually came through pretty nicely for us here. We picked up, like, eight familiars on one room. Oh, that was pretty nasty, but... Anyway, I would expect that to basically be the end of new stuff on this run. We don't have an amazing luck stat or anything along those lines. So, I wouldn't, uh... I mean, this run looks like it's going to be a win fairly comfortably. We never even really came close, but it's a surprisingly... Like, not that powerful win. A 7 rate of fire and uh, 5.32 luck. On paper, let me put it this way. You go down to the Cosmo, you look at the odds. I don't think they're giving us great odds in this run right now. However, it just goes to show you the power of friendship, you know? Poke goes doing great stuff for us. Incubus is doing great stuff for us. Uh, and Mysterious Baby, it's doing what it can. 
And this is holding us up in this, uh, in this run in which statistically we're probably a little bit underpowered. So I would love to kill uh, Lust last. Yeah, I was like, it's just not conceivable in all likelihood. We may never get another chance to use Crooked Penny, but even if we don't, it, it did what it could when it could. And that's what matters. 2.32 luck is usually good for, like, an item drop, but, you know, it's a variable chance, so... We could get six item drops in our next six rooms, or we can get zero. Both of them are, are somewhat within the realm of plausibility. The only one that's confusing me is Peeper's Eye. Oh no, we, we definitely have two Peeper's Eyes going around. Alright, so... First Swallowed Penny play did not come across the way I wanted. But you know what? At least it doubled everything else for us on the room that actually was huge. Farting up one regular chest doesn't matter to me. As much. I mean, um, self-flagellation will come later. There's always time for that. Look at this room. Let's go! <laughs> what kind of person would I be? I think, it, let, let's get it out of the way. We don't have that many keys, so I'm going to open these ones. None of these are that useful right now. I'm going to hedge my bets and open these ones as well. Mr. Mega's pretty good, and we should just take static tiers, because those are cool. Um, everything else, we can afford to lose, so we should double. And then we'll open, like, another two here and just see how it looks. Why not? Let's get weird with it. Okay, everything else we can afford to lose, so let's double. He's done it. We don't have any more keys at this point, so we might as well just crack into him, dude. Um, okay, this is actually madness. Let me out of this crazy place. I can't believe that worked. I mean, we don't have the keys to make it really work. We just created like a 32 item second secret room. That's a rarity. So you know what? This run had a little something going for it in the end. Um, that's a very strange array of tears to finish this one off. Alright, maybe we should just shoot straight. <laughs> I was trying to get like some cool technology zero tiers going, but I'm not sure how well that's working out. Tech Zero, I'm still trying to solve. I haven't figured that item completely out yet. Either way, not bombs or keys, so we're out of here. Cool finish to this run. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.